What's going on guys? National Master James Canty III here and today we're looking at Legends of Chess. We're looking at a game in particular from Jan Nipomniachi playing white and Boris Gelfand playing black. Now of course for all my accelerated dragon players out there, this game is very important because this is one of the offbeat accelerated dragon moves that you may see or face. And in this way we can actually check check it out in great detail just to see kind of how Gelfand handled this opening today let's see it guys here it is this was a very very long game to be honest it was like 88 moves oh my goodness 88 moves and Gelfand had an accuracy of 80 percent boris Gelfand did in this game and then um yanni pomniachi had 61 percent uh accuracy so let's go through it guys and this is just some things and some some things we can point out and learn here now this is going to go in the hyper accelerated dragon playlist so make sure you guys check out the other uh, videos in that playlist as well so e4 c5 right regular things and then we get a3 on the board e4 c5 a3 almost like a wing gambit but the wing gambit starts with b4 first so it's unprotected so that does leave, leave us the option of capturing and going up a full pawn but after a3 happens the problem here is now that uh the b4 is protected and this is a little bit uh kind of an offbeat opening it's not a little bit it is offbeat but when this happens the idea behind these a3 b4 stuff is to dislodge the c5 pawn so we can play d4 in one move almost like in a c3 cecile for the kill like we do here at the channel the c3 sicilian when we play c3 and we play d4 to have a second pawn in the center and not actually exchange this lesser c pawn or uh, have a uh, white kind of doesn't want to exchange for the lesser c pawn um, here for the d pawn so b4 just kind of makes them off center so if we do allow b4 to happen after b4 captures we can play d4 eventually or even play it now in a gambit like fashion sometimes this doesn't end well, end well for black but of course this didn't happen in the game after c5 a3 he plays g6 and now at hyper accelerated dragon players absolutely this is what we do we play g6 almost against everything and then bishop g7 is now going to be a deterrent for b4 so if b4 happens here he can just play bishop g7 with a huge deterrent here that just doesn't feel good to have uh, a rook under attack here with the bishop coming to g7 all right, so after g6, we have bishop to c4. He's just going to develop. And in this case, we have to do the same. Bishop g7, h4. Man, I'm talking about Jan de Pomniachi is trying to deter everybody from playing the Hyper Accelerated Dragon ever in your life right here because this is extremely scary he's like combining a3 bishop c4 h4 i mean it, this man is playing like four different sicilians at the same time now of course in one of my previous videos i did say you can't mix sicilians with white but of course you're not yanni pomniazzi either so with that being said h4 is a big boy move and he is just trying to make some big boy moves here but a girl fan says i'm not going to respond to it i don't even care he plays e6 here and d5 is the next move so we can claim our stake in the center as well and uh we can just you know meet anything with almost d5 knight c3 we can't but let's see what happens knight c3 plays 97 because he wants to play d5 and then h5 happens so now h6 is a threat maybe or even taking but capturing we're okay with so if we you know go somewhere like maybe knight to c6 in this position we wouldn't be afraid of h of uh, h takes g6 because after captures the rook is just defended but maybe in some cases you might be afraid of h6 in itself. Uh, just depends on what's going on. I think the bishop's doing well here. Bishop f6, bishop e5, bishop d4, even bishop f8. I think that's a little passive though. Um, but okay, so here, here's what happened. D5 was played on the board. So he strikes the center as you should, and then white backs up. Yanni Pavniyashi just says bishop a2, get the bishop on a long diagonal, hence the move a3 very early, early on. That's why bishop c4 can be played, and then back to a2. And then after knight c, uh, well, actually d4 first, I like this move by black. I like this a lot because we just gained some space. And a lot of times I remember developing in these type positions here over um over anything else just because you want to keep attention but recently of course i have been playing this d4 move not in this particular position but similar ones where we actually gain some space here and we are now on into the fourth rank into white's territory leaving from the, the fifth rank in our territory into white's with d4 on a board so pretty nice and then it says knight c to e2 and right here the notes here the notes they already analyzed this in great detail it says that the position is equal which i agree and at this point i mean black has already done what they wanted to do you want to equalize out of the opening well now you can also play for a win based off of what white does in this situation actually i can't tell you how many times i probably would have played knight c6 or b6 or even e5 in some type of manner here castling is debatable but if there's something else better to do then castle then that's what you do first and that's why sometimes cap casting early could be a mistake 
But he played d3 here, which is very interesting to me. I was like, d3? That's nice. d3 is just extremely interesting, I think. It does what, what uh, not, not only does it open up the, the diagonal here, but it also makes d3 a weak square. So after capturing like he does, now I have my queen on d3. This is extremely annoying. I got a pawn on e4 hanging. And Jan actually doesn't care about that. So he plays knight to f3. Now there must be something wrong with taking this pawn. And let's just see what happens. Like, he didn't take the pawn. So I need to know. Let's look at the engine here. Best move is queen takes e4. The second move is just develop, and that's what he did. He just developed, but Jan, he was like, you know what? Gelfand was like, hey, you already playing h4. You playing bishop c4. You playing a3. I'm not about to just take this free pawn, even if it is free. We're just going to develop because Jan Nepomniachtchi is probably going to just come at me and get some compensation. Maybe he does with a d3, gets the bishop out, whatever. But he plays knight to c6 instead and gives him a chance to defend his pawn. Bishop to b1, he takes it. And then we have to stay active, guys. One thing I noticed when I looked at this game with the accelerated dragon here is that you have to stay active and you want to try to make white inactive. So if you make a, if you, uh, make a quick observation here, look at all the pieces on the back rank here. Now this still this game went 88 moves guys so we're going to fly through some of this stuff cuz this is 88 moves long long game but here on the back rank everything is uh, still here and black's doing quite fine here. I mean we got the queen out, two knights, the bishops on a great diagonal. This bishop is bad though but it, with a few moves we'll be fine. After d3 making this bishop atrocious here. This bishop can't hit anything either. We go b6 followed up with bishop b7 or even better bishop a6 hitting d3 and rook to d8. Next move, bishop f4, we got to make a threat, and what does he do? He does the same. Now, at the same time, he did block the bishop in, but we do have more of a grip on d4, and we have stopped, and we gained a tempo. We made one bishop good, but the other one we made bad. Let's see what happens. Bishop b3, bishop g4. We're going to attack the knights here, feeling good about this position. h6 happens. Black is definitely in the driver's seat here. It says bishop f6, the note here is black has some pressure. I totally agree. I can even castle king side now and not worry about having a king side attack because h6 has closed off this side. You would have to sacrifice with a piece that is not even active. So in, this is what I tell my students all the time. There's two evaluations. There's the human evaluation and there's the computer evaluation. Let's see what the computer evaluation is right here. In this position, the computer's evaluation says, oh, it's minus 0.48. Oh, it's still equal. But if you look at this as a human, man, this is tough to play. You're in trouble. I'm threatening to do this. Maybe rook to d8. I have the d4 square. I can always castle. Your king is not the safest. The pieces are discoordinated. It's hard to make good moves in a bad position. And it's hard to make good moves when you're not Yanni Pamiachi or Super GM or a computer. So with that being said, bishop f6 is putting extreme pressure on here. I think black is much better here. After bishop f6, bishop a from uh, bishop a2 to actually now hit the f7 pawn. Rook to d8, thanks for the tempo, we'll take it. Rook to d8, knight to c3, giving up the pawn and saying, I'm daring you to take it. And man, oh man, I mean, Yanni Pamiachi, I think, <laughs> yeah, Gelfan was like not taking anything. I mean, there was two free pawns. Let me actually see if the engine takes it. The engine says that that's the second move. Now it's the third. First move is castles, that's what Gelfan did. Second is knight d4. Third is queen takes d3. But it's just funny that like two pawns were hanging. In the Grandmaster game, two pawns are clearly blatant. You can take them. There is no like, oh, you're getting mated or, oh, I'm losing a piece. That's obvious. But like this stuff, like you just, just take the pawn, it feels like. But he actually castled. After castles, there's bishop c4 and then knight d4. Black is in the driver's seat here, guys. I like how we just took over the game. And, and as an accelerated dragon player here, guys, we know that the Maroxy bind is when they go c4 and e4 but we actually got a slightly a Maroxy bind backwards which is c5 and e5 and this could never be wrong for black this can never be bad usually when you have an accelerated dragon or Maroxy bind backwards where now you're playing with the white pieces basically after knight to d4 bishop takes d4 and then there's c takes d4 knight d5 they make some trades here and then bishop g5 happens i thought this was a very clever move here just taking a diagonal i mean this bishop's a monster you can't actually get it out of the way right now I mean, this was like a star move. Like, this bishop is shutting down. This bishop is shutting down. The queen has to go somewhere. He was like, yeah, I can't allow this. You're just going to have to take it, big fella. And that's exactly what he did. He said, takes, takes, and then queen f6. And now we're in the driver's seat this way. We can take the h6 pawn. We can threaten the c file here. Black feels like they're crushing. And it's almost like, how did they make it 80 moves here? How did they make it to 80 moves? And that just lets you know how much of a beast Yanni Pamiachi is.
he found everything. Let's actually go back. Where were we? Uh, back here. Oh man, he's such a beast, All right? Okay, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen f6, rook h3, and then he sacrifices the exchange here. Check this out right here. Rook h3, and then he says rook takes d5 and just and just uh, sacrifices the exchange. I'm a fan of it. I mean, queen f5 immediately hits the rook and the pawn, a double attack. That's what he went for. Rook to g3, we can take this. That's extra material. But bishop f4 is what is good as well. They actually said bishop takes h6 was a good line. But bishop f4, it directly hits the rook. Rook to g4, queen takes d3. Rook takes f4, exchange sacrifice right back. You hit me, guess what? I hit you. And we keep swinging back and forth. Somebody's going to drop. E takes f4, and then uh, rook to d1. Queen takes f3, and now we stop and we look at this same game. How does this look? Black's definitely in the driver's seat, especially if we grab this pawn here and we have a pass pawn going this way. These pawns are not mobile yet. We do have a pass pawn with potential, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be able to queen, especially with the rook and queen combo and an unsafe king. So let's see what happens. Queen takes f4, queen takes d4, threatening mate. Mate is right here. Get crazy if you want to. So he says queen h1, and then I'm going to take this pawn to eliminate your checkmate. Now let's make some moves here. d6, queen back to f8, because the, he's trying to queen this as quickly as possible. King c2, queen e8, just to get a little bit closer here. And then the next move, guys, rook d7. This is really nice because it starts to uh, think about the uh, blockade. When you, when you want to like stop a pass pawn or any pawn for that matter, you have to blockade it. Doing it with the queen is not good because the queen has better things to do than blockade a pawn. This rook, though, is definitely nice to blockade with in a rook and pawn ending. Here we go. King a1, queen e6. He's trying to get the queens off. He takes on f4. We go king g7. Just grab a little bit more space. Try to push the h pawn down the road here. Queen d2. There it is. h5. Queen c3. I probably would play queen f6, but he played queen king h7. I'm just trying to get the queens off because I know this is a win. Three versus one, and this is weak by himself. In-game wise, this is over. Three versus one. All we got to do is trade the queens. That's why I would have played queen f6, and this pawn is hanging as well because it's very vulnerable. Queen to g4 and f4. Queen back to e6. a4. King g8. A little bit of shuffle here. A lot of times it takes some shuffling. Queen e1. Queen back to e6. Oh, man. Look at the finesse here. Then he plays f6. After gaining a little bit of time, poking around, just trying to see him what's out there. What do we do next? Then he plays f6. King a2, king g7. And a lot of times, guys, it's about to shuffle here. I mean, these moves, not that they don't mean anything, but at the same time, they are just trying to figure out how do I improve my position? What is he going to play next? It's a lot of back and forth, cat and mouse kind of thing. h4, queen to c6, king back to g7, and then f5. That was a blunder. That was a straight up blunder. Now it just says queen takes f5, and um, now he's in trouble. Queen takes f5. Rook to e2, and king h6 was a blunder. It just says a5 was the best. a5? Nobody's playing a5 in this position. You have to be kidding me. a5. Really? a5. That's the engine move for you. a5 is the move. Hoping for rook e7. Let's just see what they were thinking. Queen f2. I still don't understand this a5 move. Is it because of queen b4 check or something? I don't know what's going on here. But that is what the analysis they have there. King h6. This is more of a human move I would recommend as well. King h6 is what he chose. Rook e7. And then after rook e7, rook d8. And now it says queen c5 should win. Queen c5 should win at this point. Queen c1 check. Black continues to play with concentration. All right. This is probably some... I mean, not probably, guys. This was some excellent technique by Gale Fan here. Um, if you check this out, guys, it was just a very instructive in game. G5, then we play H3. So it's time to queen the pawn, but our king is unsafe. And if we keep pushing and the rook is kind of tied down here, we could also lose in some cases due to our king's safety. Or even lose the queen, like if a case where we may be checked on this diagonal, and we block with our queen, and he comes behind here and rook check on G7 to capture our queen. So you have to be very careful. D7 is here now. We ought to be extremely careful of the queening happening. After D7, there's king G6, king B2, and then G4. Now he's threatening to play G3, and when two pass pawns get this close, it's going to be equivalent to a rook. So he can't allow that. King H1, A6. He didn't play G3, I'm assuming, because of what? It's a good question. Let's see it. What happens on G3 right now? It's okay. He could have played g3 anyway. But rook e3 says, and it's just a lot of complications. I understand. So he actually played a6. Man, that's just a... <laughs> yeah, 
you had to be thinking about every possibility ever on the board to play this move right here as a human a6 i mean that's that's a move for you he played a6 bro king to b2 and then after king b2 there's b5 so he wanted to like clarify the queen side first before he did anything else and that makes sense that's just more of a slow strategical way to play sometimes it, it is the way to play sometimes it's not but it worked out here king to a3 now there's only two pawns versus of course four here and black's just doing well obviously and this is why here it is g3 rook to e3 we're just going to attack it so i think what queen g4 or something g2 anyway rook g3 check and then king f7 x clam that's an x clam where else would you go oh you don't want to go there that seems scary yeah, king f7. And then what if a check happens? Yeah, what, that, what happens on the check? That's what he played. Queen e6, but there's... Oh, he doesn't matter. He went for it too. No, he didn't. But here, queen, you have rook g7. This is what I was talking about, guys, about the king safety. If your king safety is not correct, of course, then there are tactics like this. But luckily, we get our queen right back, right? I'm sorry. I have to see this. Take it, check. He has a check on e7. This is extremely weird, guys. I mean, this is what I'm looking at right here. Check. Take it. He takes. We queen. He checks. Right? Like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? What is really going on right now? What's the eval here? Is Black's winning? Okay, so what's up with this check? We got to see it. Queen takes. G1. Queen e7. King g6. If I just take this rook. Oh, it's mate. Oh my goodness. It's mate over here. Wow. Look at that. It's beautiful. Man, that's why he couldn't go for it. Looking a step further. Ouch. You couldn't do that because of mate. If it wasn't for that mate, that line would work. That's why I was like, why didn't he just do that? And this is why you do your homework and you just check it out. Check the lines. Why didn't he do it? Queen to c2, f5, white uh, must prevent a5 or right here. But uh, he was actually threatening this. This was just super strong. He was threatening that. Queen to b2. I can see how someone could mess this up so quickly with black here because your king's safety is non, it's not even there. Your king is not safe with all these checks. So you have to be extremely accurate. King to e7. I mean, it looked like the king is in the middle of the street. But then he finds king e7, king f8 in a little triangulation type of uh, setup here. Very nice. Rook takes d7, allowing the check on a back rank. The check doesn't matter, he says. And then queen g8 check, king e7, and he's going to try to check him into oblivion here. And it looks like, it literally looks like I'm in trouble here. Like, what's the eval? What a game, bro. What a game. Black is up minus 11 here. So he's crushing. But man, these checks seem extremely scary. And if you noticed here, I've actually been doing a lot of studying on endgame. And I have noticed a lot that even in these kind of type of positions when things are, are solid and held, it's okay to actually still advance the king as long as you're not getting made it, of course. But the pieces around it and it's justified, you know, with the pieces that you have around your king. In this case, it would be the queen and a rook. They kind of cover a lot of things. And we're, we are hitting this rook with no immediate checks for white here. Rook to e1 and then rook to g7. He has to be very careful, again, on where the checks are. Of course, we can't go here, but there is one here. We probably run to this side. Here we go queen to b8 and then we queen here it is this has got real crazy takes takes check you thought she was winning huh he thought this was over that's what he said oh you thought this was over takes for the rook big fella we are winning still but he was like oh you thought this was over queen c3 queen e3 king f4 now this is over now based off of the play here because this is just a technical win here guys nothing but technique in this in this way queen e5 king b6 queen d4 and then queen g1. He had to get here so he could queen. Because all those other times were extremely hard to get to, guys. This game lasted 88 moves. How many games do you know? How many games of your own have lasted 88 moves here? What a strong showing from Boris Gale fan here. Against Yanni Pomniachi playing with white. Again, here we go, guys. Accelerated Dragon stuff. He played it right here. Top of... Uh, okay, he playing in the Legends of Chess. And he, like, accelerated, right? That's how you know it's a great opening. We love it here, too, at the channel here with the Jedi. G6, absolutely. Then we play Bishop G7. H4, we're not afraid of it. We don't care. We're going to strike the center anyway. Knight E7, so we can put more protection on the center. D5, strike it. You know what? You're going back. D4, keep going backwards. Knight C2, position is equal. But, I mean, we got some play here. D3 is better. Opening up the diagonal and cramping up White's position. Make a few more moves here. We develop. We put our queen on a great square. 
b6 and this is like the starting position here this is a very nice starting position bishop g4 bishop f6 rook d8 and castles when we get here we have done everything we need to do this is very good at this point there's many ways that we can go but i highly recommend guys you watch this video a few times especially if you are a hyper accelerated dragon player so you can check out how this actually works what's going on and how it's going on here with this uh, with this with this game in particular boris showed us a very nice showing here today and a few ideas that we can use in our own games here guys so thank you so much for watching this video make sure you subscribe if you are new to the channel share this video like it let me know the, uh, under the comments and everything like that guys i appreciate it and today's game was yanni pomniachi versus boris gale fan in the legends of chess i'll see you guys on the next video